they finally did it. What is up, you guys? It's Tony Holiday, back at it again, another video. It's been a while coming, but I appreciate the patience because we have been given something that is simply amazing. The Logic 10.5 update has just surpassed everybody's standards, I think, in terms of what Logic was and now is. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to use the Drum Machine Designer. If you started uh, following this channel because of watching my absolute uh, best way to do drums and logic tutorial, you will know that that was all through Ultra Beat and it was such a mess and a big workaround. This actually just puts all that to bed. We don't need that anymore. This is so much simpler, more intuitive, and ultimately it's just gonna help you make stuff better, faster, quicker, easy workflow. They've essentially taken the entire DAW and they've just like applefied it. So they've made everything so much simpler, easy to work with. I've been messing around with the update for a couple days now. I didn't want to put videos out right away until I kind of had a good idea of how they worked. This is going to be the absolute best way to do drums in Logic. And I think it's going to be the final video on that one because they've essentially nailed it this time. Before we get started, please go follow your boy on all socials. That is Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's Tony Holiday. Let's get straight into the video, guys. I'm gonna show you the best way to do drums in Logic Pro using the 10.5 update with the new instance of Drum Machine Designer. Let's go. All right, you guys, so you should be able to see my DAW here. Um, essentially what I have is just an Apple loop and I just threw on a uh, channel EQ, which is just to take out some of the low end. And then I actually threw a halftime on there as well and I reversed the actual audio file and pitched it up and it just kind of gave it that kind of like glitchy sort of background trap style. Maybe something like, I don't know, like Lil Uzi Vert would get on something like that. But I got this Apple loop and I just changed the BPM to 155. So let's take a listen to what this sounds like. So what you can do here, guys, is press F on your keyboard, and that's gonna bring up this uh, side window here, which is your all files. Essentially what you wanna do is put all your drum samples into one folder, and then you can always just kind of drag and drop from that folder just by pressing F on your keyboard. So for me, I've actually saved it as a bookmark. I have this Tony Holiday Drum Playground, and these are actually all sounds that I'm gonna be putting out very shortly. This pack is about 99% done. I just have to do the artwork and essentially find a good way to promote it. Be prepared for an awesome set of drum, uh, drum one-shot samples and a lot of other cool stuff uh, in the near future. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start dragging these in here. The old drum machine designer was actually routed through a back end of Ultra Beat. But they've totally done the back end over and it's now run through something called the Q sampler or quick sampler. I'm gonna grab a clap here, so the Murda clap, and I'm just gonna drag that over to where our tracks are. And you can see it says create new track using, and we have all these options here for quick sampler, original optimized, drum machine designer, and then a couple different instances of alchemy. We're gonna wanna go over to drum machine designer and just let that go. And as you can see, now this is our drum machine designer and our clap has been put in the first place here. This is the new drum machine designer, you guys. You may recognize this kind of face here where it doesn't have anything because they've kept that kind of modern look. I think it looked good, but it just wasn't functional. It wasn't functional for dragging and dropping any kits or anything like that. You could barely use the logic kits as was. Everything was way too hot. It was a mess. They fixed it. This is excellent. They've given you this kind of side, uh, little drop down window here, which is the Q sampler. So it has a couple LFOs, a mod matrix, a pitch, filter, amplifier. And then there's the main sample here. So this is the clap that I've dragged in and we can play it there by pressing that button. So what we're gonna do, you guys, is actually drag in all our samples into the different pads here, and then that's gonna give us the drums to work with, and it's all gonna be kept nice and neat under the drum machine designer. So let's start doing that. We have the clap there. Now if we wanna go back here, let's say we wanna get a snare to layer with it, the Costa. So if we grab the Costa, we can just go over here, and it says add sample to drum machine designer. So if you do that again, it's gonna open it up again, and it's just gonna automatically place it in the next available slot. So nice, so easy. Just drag and drop your samples. If you wanna just keep this open, you can also drag in your stuff that way. So let's say I want this kick, so I can just drag it on in any one of these pads here, and that's gonna go in, so I'll naturally do it on the next one. And you can see that there's all these little um, 
labels underneath each of them. So there's like the D1 snare one, C sharp one rim, C1 kick one. That's essentially what the Logic um, stock kits will be labeled like. For example, if I was to put the kick where the clap is and that clap where ever they have a clap in here, so over here, then that means we could essentially just switch between kits if all of our MIDI is placed that way, if that makes sense. You don't have to worry about that too much if you're doing third party samples. It's more for like auditioning different kits. If you keep them in the same slots, then you can expect the same type of instrument to be played when you do different uh, kits and such. We're not gonna worry too much about that. We're just gonna place these samples wherever we feel fit. We got the kick. Let's actually go back here. We'll grab some hi-hats like the Benz, drum machine designer, a perk, an open hat. And last but not least, how could we forget about our 808? Typically before, when you do 808s, you would actually do it in a separate track into Alchemy. We no longer have to do that. That's how awesome this drum machine designer is. It's very similar to like the FL Studio step sequencer sampler in the sense that you can do step sequence drums and then you can actually just convert it to MIDI and you can do different pitches within each instrument as well. So let's kind of get into that next here. So we can close up the side window there by pressing F on our keyboard. And now we have this untitled, we'll call it DMD, automatically puts it into multi-output. So we have all these different tracks. As you can see, you can change the volume with them. You can individually change the pan of them. The DMD, this is gonna be the master volume for all of these um, samples down here. And that actually also helps too, is let's say if you wanted to side chain to the actual melody, you can just go side chain instrument and it has all the different instruments here, which are within the drum machine designer, but they've made them uh, single um, outputs. So you can just use that. So let's kind of highlight this DMD track here. We don't need to keep that open. We'll right click and go create pattern region. And now this is a new tab here called the step sequencer. This just looks impeccable in my opinion. So I'm gonna make a little kind of pattern here. I'll show you how quickly we can do that with the new step sequencer. And then I'm gonna show you the other parameters involved. So I'm gonna change it from 16 steps to 32. As you can see guys, simple pattern. Now something that you might've noticed right away here is the hats are not where they should be. And what's really cool is just, let's say you screwed that up. What you can do here is just highlight the, uh, the H hat here, the hi hat, and you can just click these guys here to move them um, like the whole actual sequence uh, just by one little, little thing like that. So that's really a cool feature. What they've done is they've individually taken all our samples, placed them on their own sequencer kind of um, output, and then you can manually affect each one from there. So we're gonna kind of go into more of that now. So check this out, the hats here. We don't want them to be right on every single beat. And before what we did was we would go into the MIDI, we would take them, Command A, drag them all over just slightly to kind of offset it. Well, if you click these little arrows beside each of the samples, that's when it's gonna bring up the parameters. So for the hats, we can actually go down here to where it says these uh, plus and X there. So you'll hit the plus and grab another parameter. If you click where the uh, actual parameter is there with the words, it's gonna bring up all the options for you. So let's do something that's called start offset. And that's gonna actually take the beginning of the MIDI, the, off the starting of it, and we can offset it however much we like. And that's where these two little buttons here, the down and the up arrows come in, is we can actually um, press that and it's gonna take every single one of our little sequenced hi-hats there and change the offset of it. We can also change the offset individually by going here and clicking and then dragging. But another thing that we can do is actually take the velocities and just go across there and alternate the kind of uh, velocities to give it a little more of a realistic feel. So now let's take a listen to this. It's subtle but it's so much better. And it was so easy to make happen as well. This little snare at the end here, let's make it into a roll. So we can actually click this parameter down here and we already have one called note repeat. And what that is, is this little bottom one where it says one, you can drag that all the way to 16 
So that's gonna repeat 16 of the same sample where it was just one MIDI note. It's gonna chop it up 16 times. We don't want that many. I think I'm gonna take it to maybe like two and then I'll add an extra snare there and make it one just for kind of a quick little roll. And the velocity will bring up like that. So it's almost like a velocity ramp. Typically you have to click the top if you wanna add it in. But what you can also do is uh, hold command and that'll allow you to add it by clicking any of the other parameters. So that's kind of like a little shortcut as well. Let's take a listen and hear this little snare roll at the end. So you hear that little stutter there? That was because we had two of them play within the one region and then uh, the one as well. As you can see, we can get quite intricate drum patterns within the step sequencer before we even made it out to MIDI. But I'll let you guys kind of go in and figure all these out. But the two that I really use when I'm making drums so far are the note repeat, the velocity as well, when you're kind of trying to make different variations. And then also the um, start offset is a really cool one for hi-hats. Let's just leave that for now. So we can press E on our keyboard to close that. We have our drum pattern here, but that doesn't really work for arranging purposes. So what we can do, just right click, and then we'll go down to convert, convert to MIDI region. And as you can see now, this is our drum track here that we just made with the sequence notes, but it's all in MIDI. Also just can right click that again, go to MIDI, separate by note pitch. And now we have all these different drum tracks, which are our individual drums that we have made with the sequencer. So if I just wanna solo out the hats, maybe add the kick, snare clap, take the snare away. You can see how for arranging purposes, this is gonna be awesome because you can just command C that, go to the end of the region there. And now if you wanna, you know, kind of make like a intro, okay, you'll get rid of those and then maybe have it come in then you'll get rid of those two. And then maybe like that, you can kind of arrange it just so much quicker. It's so easy, it's so intuitive to use like that. The last thing I wanted to get on guys was the 808 here. Obviously we made all those ones in the step sequencer and you can also do that within the step sequencer. You can actually do melodic notes and such. I'm gonna show you how to do it in MIDI. So this is kind of the workflow that I would use just because I'm used to using MIDI. Let's make a new region. So we'll do TP to do pencil tool, TT again to get our uh, cursor back and drag that out to make a region and then double click that to go into the actual MIDI. Let's find the key of this sample. So I think it's in G. So now I'm gonna do TB to use the brush tool because that's what I like to use when making 808s. All right, so that's just kind of a simple little pattern here. Let's go with that. So we'll do TT again to get the uh, cursor back. Command A to select all. Shift option down to go uh, down a couple octaves. And then if you hold shift option and you uh, drag the end of the MIDI note, it will actually make sure that all of the notes are the same length. So now let's take a listen. So let's take a listen to it all together now. And as you can see throughout that whole thing, we can adjust the volumes individually with all of our drum tracks. We have the 808s. We can add uh, different audio effects onto each channel and it's not gonna be added onto any of the other ones. It's a true multi-output plugin and it's so easy to use, you guys. But yeah, guys, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give your boy a thumbs up. Make sure to hit subscribe so you keep getting more videos of mine. Make sure to go follow your boy on all socials. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's Tony Holiday. The 10.5 update, guys. Get out there, explore it, make good use of it. I'm gonna be doing more videos with it, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Tony Holiday, signing off.